our mission is to make data stunningly easy to work with. Why? Because data is the foundation of every application. It was the ability to harness data that powered many of the technology revolutions of the past decade. But as the prevalence of data-driven applications has grown, so have the challenges to leveraging all that data. 11 years ago, our founders saw that the biggest issue facing developers was the database. The databases of the time were a poor fit for this new breed of applications, which needed to deal with enormous amounts of data in many formats from disparate sources and adapt quickly to compete in an increasingly demanding marketplace. Traditional relational offerings were rigid, fragile, and couldn't scale horizontally, making them slow to develop on and expensive to maintain. They set out to build a new open source general purpose database built on three core pillars. First, the document model. The document model makes working with data easy because it's flexible, suited to a broad set of use cases and maps well to the way developers work in modern object-oriented programming languages. Second, distributed systems. Horizontal scale, redundancy, and workload isolation should be table stakes for databases, so a distributed architecture was necessary. And finally, the ability to run anywhere, so you can start developing on your laptop, run it in your corporate data center, or manage it in the public cloud. Just like Kalen, EVP core engineering Dan Passett has been part of that entire journey. That's true, Sahir, and MongoDB server is reaching version 4.4 this summer. The beta is available for evaluation now. We developed version 4.4 with a laser focus on the things you've been asking for. Easier scaling, faster performance, and more flexibility to solve even more use cases. Let's start with scaling. The minimum production-ready cluster you can deploy in MongoDB Atlas has three nodes. Over time, your cluster might grow, especially if your business is going well. As your workload grows, there are some important choices you have to make. Essentially, you need to decide about the scaling model of the distributed system for your database. With MongoDB Atlas, we aim to make all of this easy for you. You can move between cloud providers, seamlessly scale your clusters, and use global clusters to distribute your load geographically in order to keep data close to your users and prevent it from leaving a region if necessary. All of this is great, but there's one thing we have to talk about at the server level. Sharding, the best way of scaling data. Now, MongoDB gives you flexibility to choose exactly how you want to scale. This means that you might need to make some choices, and the most important choice is choosing the right shard key. Let me quickly recap what a shard key is. A shard key determines the distribution of the collection's documents among the cluster's shards. In MongoDB, the shard key is an indexed field or group of fields. The ideal shard key allows MongoDB to distribute documents evenly throughout the cluster. Let's say your data has a customer ID field. You may, for example, choose to split your data onto different shards based on that customer ID. Say you have two shards and you randomly allocate a number between 1 and 10,000 as your customer ID. Behind the scenes, different ranges of customer IDs will be allocated to each shard. And this might work just fine as you get started. There's a lot of pressure to get the selection of your shard key exactly right. And not just right for your current use case and workload, but also right for the future, regardless of how much you may scale or how your data or workload may change. Let's return to our example with the shard key customer ID. Now, it could happen that as you grow, some customers amass a lot of data, which would have to be stored all on the same shard, meaning we cannot split their data over more shards. This can lead to uneven load, putting more pressure on just a single shard. Now, there was a way to fix this beforehand, but it required quite a bit of effort. You've probably guessed where I'm going with this. Yes, we've solved this problem for you. You can now refine your shard key at any time, allowing you to adapt data distribution across cluster as your database grows and your application evolves. You still need to think about your shard key, but you don't need to plan for all possible future needs up front. With refinable shard keys, you have the flexibility to evolve data distribution as your requirements change, all without downtime. Now, getting back to our example with the customer ID shard key, you can now add the order ID as a second part of the shard key. This allows the big chunks of data that each belong to a single customer to be split and moved to other shards, leading to a more even load across the cluster. So far, so good. We may still have a problem with this, though. Let's say the order IDs are in monotonically increasing order. 
Maybe there is a customer that is a big online retailer that places orders with the platform as they come into that retailer. If a lot of orders come in for a big customer, they will all go to the same shard, causing uneven workload. The answer here is hashing the order ID. You could do this in the application before, but now the database can also handle it for you with support for compound hashed shard keys. This will ensure a more evenly distributed load across your shards. Sharding can improve the end user experience, but mainly these improvements focus on making scaling easier for you. The next improvements are all about ensuring your user's experience is stable and performant. If a user performs an action in your application, the response should be as quick as possible. And that's where we've driven some real innovation in 4.4. Up until version 4.2, if a query was sent to MongoDB, one node would be responsible for sending the answer. However, if this node was busy with something else, maybe a hardware issue or disk slowdown, the user could see higher latency. In 4.4, we minimize P95 and P99 long tail latency by dispatching queries to multiple members of a replica set where possible and returning the result from the quickest responding node. We also worked on resilience. This is to reduce user impact due to replica set elections after a node goes down, whether due to planned maintenance or unplanned failures. We do that with the help of mirrored reads. Mirrored reads keep the caches of electable secondaries warm by continuously mirroring a subset of reads to them. Now, if the primary then goes down, the secondary that takes over as the new primary will already have a warmed up cache, reducing the impact of the failover on your customers. These are exciting changes that will make MongoDB even more performant, resilient, and reliable. Let's look at the query language now. As you know, MongoDB allows for natural and flexible data modeling. With MongoDB 4.4, you have an even more flexibility in how you query your data as well. Dan, take it away. Thanks, Sahir. MongoDB is awesome as a unified data platform, and Unity is all about bringing things together in the same place. We've done that inside MongoDB as well. For example, we added the dollar $Union aggregation pipeline stage. Union allows you to blend data from multiple collections and pipelines, giving you more ways to explore and query data. Rather than just stuffing all your data you want to work with into one giant collection, you can keep data in separate collections that make sense and bring them together at query time. Union is another way of pushing much more work to the database instead of doing it in your own application. Something else we've done that allows you to push more work to your database is allowing you to embed custom JavaScript functions right inside your aggregation pipelines. This is something that was allowed in the past, but with limitations. MongoDB's new custom aggregation expressions are much more robust and give you the flexibility to do more work in the place that gives you the best performance. This is especially great for any calculations that you are currently doing in your application by pulling in potentially large amounts of data. My words aren't going to do this justice. Adrian, can you show us an example? Of course, Dan. One really neat thing we're introducing in MongoDB 4.4 is the new dollar function operator, which you can use with custom aggregation expressions. Most things I need to do with data are covered by the existing MongoDB operators, but not everything. Let's say I want to get a crew roster for the last three days. That is, every vessel boarded in the last three days and a list of their crew in alphabetical order. In our record, crew is an array of subdocuments with lots of information, but all we need is the name. And then we need to sort the array by name. Trying to do this in MongoDB means we would have a lengthy and confusing aggregation. Using the dollar function operator makes this simple. With it, I can create a function right inside my custom aggregation expression that returns the list of vessels and crew members. I can do this complex query with just a few simple lines of JavaScript add in a match for the past three days at the top, and a projection for the fields I want at the bottom, and then I run the query. And here you see the results. Here's the list of vessels and their crew members from the last three days. Crew members are in alphabetical order, and I only had to use a fairly simple aggregation. Thank you, Adrian. With custom aggregation expressions, you can do more processing server-side, delivering higher performance to your users, and you can precisely customize MongoDB to your specific needs.
There's a ton more that's new with the query language, letting you rely more on MongoDB to handle your work for you. We support MongoDB drivers for all of the most popular languages, and we are really excited to add some new drivers as well. The latest additions to the club are the MongoDB Rust driver, as well as the MongoDB Swift driver. Both are generally available after having been in beta for a few months. So if you use Rust or Swift, it's now even easier to work with MongoDB. Thanks, Dan. MongoDB 4.4 packs in the features and improvements most demanded by you. An ever richer query language, the flexibility to refine your data distribution at any time with the most sophisticated latency and security controls anywhere.